Good morning. It's 2.34 in the UK, 9.34 in Washington, D.C., Thursday, the 21st of January in the UK. And we are continuing to cover uh, and react to the inauguration of Joe Biden and of Kamala Harris, who has just addressed the nation at the uh, or just down, I should say, from the, the Lincoln Memorial, which is where Joe Biden spoke to the nation. She was on the wall, the, the mall in um, in Washington. Um, anything you want to respond to? Oh three four five six zero six zero nine seven three. Let's get some more reaction to Kamala Harris's speech, but also the rest of what has been a, an extraordinary day in many ways. Uh, with Rob Weiner, who is a former spokesperson for the Clinton and Bush White Houses in Washington, and senior staffer to Senator Ted Kennedy, and who attended. Uh, for us yesterday's uh, inauguration. Robert, good morning to you, sir. It's a, it's a pleasure, Corey. And, and what did you guys know in your parliament that we didn't know when you <laughs> tried to ban Trump from coming? And well, I guess the Queen and, and, and Boris uh, decided otherwise. But, uh, you know, now we've impeached him twice, and he's the most disgraced president in history. So we're all having a sigh of relief. Right. Well, I, I will put that to producer Corey, who you who you referenced there. It's actually Darren that's speaking to you, but never mind. Oh, Darren. <laughs> of course. And thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Darren, so much for having me. No, you're me. very welcome. So, uh, so yesterday, tell me about being at that inauguration, because I don't imagine you are a stranger to inaugurations, and I guess... No, I've been they, to they, pretty they, much all of them. Yeah, and, and, and so yesterday would have felt very different, wouldn't it? This was an, an armed camp. And thanks to uh, President Trump's uh, encouragement of the rioters to come to the Capitol, it was even more of an armed camp than it was going to be for COVID. It was going to be thin, but as my lifetime friend Jim Clyburn, who's a Democratic leader, said, we had to thin it out even more, and he was in charge of the inauguration. So it was a very weird situation where you'd go to the sides and, and you'd see – you wouldn't even see the thousands of people trying to get in. There was like maybe 100, my wife and I – did the perimeter and made sure we could see who was trying to get in. And, and, and it was very few people. Uh, mm -hmm. It was all surrounded by guard. Uh, but uh, I thought that the, given the, the dynamics that uh, Biden, who's been a lifetime friend, by the way, I've known him since we were both in our 20s, mm -hmm. um, uh, is, uh, had to deal with, um, it was good. It was, it was a phenomenal speech, uh, one that was uh, an uplifting speech, uh, Darren. And uh, we, uh, I think America's off to a good start of, of forgetting Trump. And that, for a lot of people, is what this is about. But, but that can't be where the bar continues to be, can it, Robert? D Joe Biden has well, to do more than just not be Donald Trump. He, and today... Uh, Jennifer Psaki announced uh, 15 executive orders from getting back into Paris to getting back into the World Health Organization to reversing the uh, uh, Trump uh, uh, giveaways uh, environmentally uh, to corporations by regulations. Uh, with a so, uh, so again, again, you, you think you think so those executive whole agenda? Sure, you, you think those executive orders are a good clue as to the direction of this administration. And the, and the legislation, the $1.9 trillion uh, of COVID relief and jobs and, uh, and, and, and minimum wage increase and, and all of the good things, health care uh, that's going to be provided and rent and housing that's not going to be taken away now. Um, this was a horrible presidency. Uh, and uh, that's why he left office with the 29 percent to 33 pick your poll. Uh, the lowest uh, approval rating in history of any president, and that's even Nixon. And I remember with Nixon, I was working at the Watergate at the time, and I said, oh, yay, this was only the second president in history, Democrat or Republican. We've had great ones. We've had Bushes, and we've had Reagan for Republicans. I'm a Democrat. Mm. The only ones that I cheered leaving as they left, I don't want to tell you the sign that I gave my wife and I gave to the helicopter as we were standing there. Uh, in, in, in sight of it uh, as it flew by the Capitol and uh, what the hand signal was that we gave to that helicopter as it flew by from the Capitol, uh, over the Capitol, when he decided to fly by it. Uh, you are, I think, you I'm right guess, saying this. Right? I, I can guess. Well, I think we're all guessing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, former spokesperson, I introduced you as uh, for the for the Clinton and the Bush White Houses, That's right? Correct. So, so you work you worked across the aisle. How important? I did, and yeah. I got I got. We had the rare privilege of a letter of thanks from both President Clinton and President Bush. Very few people have have both letters uh, in their archive. Okay. Uh, as, uh, in, so yes. In that spirit, how important do you think bipartisanship is going to be in? The Biden administration, given that, you know, we're now in a place where the Democrats control everything, 
What role will bipartisanship play? Well, a lot, because the word control is a little overboard when you have a 50-50 and it's broken by Kamala sure. Harris on the tie. So you've got to get the Joe Manchins of the world, the blue dog Democrats, and, and so there's, got, there's work to do. But it's everything. Uh, and uh, today, uh, when uh, Biden went to church with Schumer and McConnell and Pelosi and Kevin McCarthy, all the national leaders together, what a good sign that was. And then at the uh, swearing in, right on the, on the dais, when you, when you saw all of them and Pence taking part and dissing Trump, uh, he had enough. He had a 99.95% Horrible pandering to Trump, but boy, were his last five one hundreds phenomenal in terms of what he did to save the, the Constitution and the country uh, by presiding justly in, in the counting of the votes and, uh, and, to, and in attending when Trump asked him to attend. So the point is that there is now bipartisanship, and Biden has a relationship with McConnell uh, that is, is very productive, and the two of them have talked. And they will go forward on an infrastructure yeah. bill, how we let you guys have 300 – in Europe have 300-mile-an-hour trains, and ours go 60 is beyond me, uh, and, uh, and our highways and our roads. Uh, so uh, tunnels, bridges that are 40 percent unsafe. People don't realize how dec- – I hate to admit it and good be on worldwide radio, but how decrepit – our infrastructure is because Trump kept talking about infrastructure weeks. Mm. I remember yeah. writing a piece in the Philadelphia Inquirer, Mr. President, where's that infrastructure plan? And he had another infrastructure week, but then nothing. Okay. But we, we know, don't we, that Mitch McConnell, um, straight out of the gate, did everything he could in the Senate to block the Obama uh, uh, administration and all the things that they wanted to do. You're saying that Mitch McConnell will not behave in the same way obviously he's not majority leader but he won't behave in the same way with joe biden and does that does that just come down to personal relationships does that just come down to the fact that biden has been around in the senate for a long time apart from you want a straight answer or a political one both one after the other okay. <laughs> all right uh so uh which one am i getting yeah, first the straight the, answer here, or the political here's, answer? The, here's the straight okay. answer all right the straight answer is biden isn't black and he's centrist Obama was black, and oh, and McConnell uh, tried everything he could, uh, and the country as a whole tried everything they could to, to try to right. stop him and so block Mitch, him. So Mitch McConnell's so, racist? I'm just going to leave it right where I said, because a lot of it is subtle. And, uh, and when he puts a memo out and says everything he can do to stop any pro- productivity, any, any bills that Obama's going to have, he's not saying that about Biden. And, uh, and, and they've gotten together, and they know each other, and there's a relationship. And Biden knows the intricacies of how to motivate the Senate, having been a creature of the Senate. Uh, you know, when I first uh, met him back in, in our 20s, uh, he ran for Senate and won. That's, that's, that's how he got started. So that, uh, that's a whole different ball game to have Joe Biden, who is somebody he's worked with and respects, and he said very good things about Biden in the past. So but I Biden, think, Biden was uh, Obama's VP. But, you know, Bi- Biden was there on the ticket for both of those terms. It's extraordinary. And that's how that... a lot of stuff did get done. That's okay. exactly how it happened. Right. And so that's what's carried forward here in terms of bipartisanship. That is exactly it's the right. Of Joe Biden. Biden is a is a an expert in substance and diplomacy. Trump, like I said, your parliament knew before we did that he, that uh, he was a con man. Um, I don't want to focus too much on his future. In fact, if I never hear his voice again, it will be a day too soon. But do you think well, we he's have... talking about a new party now and he's talking yeah. about a TV network? I think he's going to be doing all he can to fight his way out of court and out of out of impeachment. Well, let's let's get back then to the Senate, because they have a role here in deciding what they're going to do with the impeachment charges that have been thrown to them by the right. House. Um, th- there's a lot of talk about the Biden administration not wanting to use up too much political capital in the first hundred days, getting bogged down, uh, pushing I- impeachment charges through the, the, the Senate. What do you think will happen? Well, some. Uh, it's going to go forward. There will be a trial. Pelosi is 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 dynamic on it. And once it goes to the Senate, it has to have a trial. Once it has a trial, those impeachment managers, and I know them, are very good, and they will bring out the substance, the question of what the president knew and when, uh, how he didn't order the guard, and he sat there blissfully watching and smiling at the TV instead of bringing the National Guard in to, to get those rioters out and to stop the violence. 
uh, even against his own vice president, where they had a noose hanging. And now the Washington Post headlines showing that this riot was planned and planned and planned in advance in terms of the storming of the Capitol. And what did Trump know and when did he know it? McConnell is purposely saying he wants an open mind. He was livid about what Trump did to the to the Republican Party and losing the Senate be, in Georgia because of it. Those two races were directly uh, the result of mm. Trump saying the re, the Republican uh, – Votes didn't count as much as the Democratic votes didn't count, and Kemp and the Secretary of State in Georgia were were should be criminal. And uh, and when he said all of that and cost uh, Republicans going to the polls in Georgia, and yeah. the Democratic organizing by Stacey Abrams was so superb. And both of the candidates, I I didn't think either was really going to win. I thought maybe one, and and for both of them to win, uh, it was. And when Trump mm. goes there the mm. night before, so McConnell owes nothing to Trump now. He lost his leadership because of it. Well, exactly. And but I, here's what I think, Robert. Tell me what you think of this. I reckon that if you're Mitch McConnell. You're thinking, I really want to be Senate Majority Leader again in two years. I want the Republicans to take Correct. back the like majority. Came back. You're exactly right, exactly. Right. So, so he, his calculation is presumably what improves the fortunes of the Republican Party more. Does impeaching, does uh, convicting Donald Trump on those on that impeachment charge, does that help the Republicans more than it hinders the Republicans? What would be your guess? Well, that's exactly right, and Trump has cost. Everybody forgets this. Trump's base is strong at 86 percent, down from 90 or something, but 86 percent support. But the problem is his base has dropped. Republicans were 31 percent of the American people, and now the latest poll shows they are only 25 percent of the American people. So when you're talking about 80 percent of 25 percent, you, you got very few people. Right. McConnell knows that. Trump has cost the uh, his that movement and and by the way he has no loyalty to that movement he's the guy who supported Hillary Clinton and this and that you know so uh, that's the problem that McConnell has well that makes Trump. it a, that makes it a slam dunk doesn't it that means it's it's Correct. it's certain that the Senate you think will convict no no because a lot of the Senate hasn't learned that lesson and you, and you've got the guys who are leading the we don't want to recognize the vote routine. Uh, and you've got them in there from Ted Cruz on through, uh, and uh, and so they want to make names for themselves uh, a different way by a, mm. by going through the primary process, which is that small number, but it's the Republicans only who will decide the president. So that's what you got to that's what okay. you got to uh, work from. Also, is the fact that they they are all dealing with their primaries of Republicans. Robert, I hope we can talk again. It's been fascinating. Thank you very much. Robert Wiener, former spokesperson for the Clinton and Bush White Houses and a senior staffer to Senator Ted Kennedy as well, who attended yesterday's uh, inauguration. LBC 247.